Baruch Rish Rebbe, from the Ottoman Empire, 1495 through 1518, he was active. He was called Barbarossa, a Barbary pirate, an Ottoman corsair, Nasty. His base of operation, Anatolia, Syria, Egypt, and the Western Mediterranean. He raided and sacked ports on Calabria and Sicily and Sardinia in southern Italy. He captured dozens of vessels. He, defeated and, it was, he was defeated and killed in 1518 by Spanish Emperor Charles V, who arrived in Algeria and commanded a force of 10,000 Spanish soldiers who marched against Redbeard and destroyed him and his war army. But he had been Pasha Barbarossa, also an Ottoman. He was active just a few years later, and he was active for a long time, from 1500 to 1545. And he defeated the Holy League of Charles V under the command of, the, of Andrea Doria at the Battle of Prevesa in 1538. It was February 1538, and Pope Paul III succeeded in, in assembling the Holy League, comprising the Papacy, Spain, the Holy Roman Empire, the Republic of Venice, and the Maltese Knights against the Ottomans. But Barbarossa defeated its combined fleet, commanded by Andrea Doria, the name of a famous ship that sunk off Cape Cod in the 1950s, at the Battle of Prevesa in September 1538. This victory secured Turkish dominance over the Mediterranean for the next 33 years until the Battle of Lepanto in 1571. So this man would dominate the Mediterranean for decades. Next up, Jean Fleury, a.k.a. Florin, from France. 1521 to 1527, he was madman. A privateer naval officer, he seized three Spanish ships carrying Hernande Cortez's Aztec plunder from Mexico to Spain in 1523. Way to go. That's uh, Cortez the killer there. Earliest recorded active piracy against the Spanish, and he encouraged the French Corsairs, the Dutch Sea Beggars, and the English Sea Dogs to begin attacking shipping and settlements in the Spanish Main during the next several decades. So he got this idea. They're looting the Aztecs and the Incas, and they're moving across the ocean. Why not jump their ship and take their cargo? Here's my favorite pirate. Pete Hine. Piet Hine. Pete, I like. The Dutch friend said it's Pete. His nation's Holland. He was active between 1628 and 1638. Relatively short period, but he was one of the wealthiest pirates there ever was. Pete Peterson Hein, or Peter Peterson Hein. He was born November 25th, 1577, in Delft in Holland. Son of a captain, he was twice captured by the Spanish and held as a slave. Never forgot that. He joined the East India Company in 1607 and became a captain in 1612. In 1623, he became vice admiral of the Dutch West India Company. He led assaults on Portuguese settlements in Brazil and in Angola. And he set out to capture the Spanish treasure fleet in 1628. He also had a guy working with him known as Whit de Whit when they went after that fleet in 1628. Whit Cornelisio de Witt, born March 28, 1599, in Debriel, Holland. Raised as a Mennonite and a pacifist. That didn't last long. He became captain of the ship Delft and carried out spectacular raids leading the Nassau fleet against Spanish possessions on the west coast of America. His fleet crossed the Pacific and reached the West Indians. He eventually circumnavigated the globe. And in the summer of 1625, he laid waste to Ternate in the Spice Islands. He became vice admiral of the Spice Fleet and was worth five million guilders. So, went to and Pete Hine, what did they do? Well, in 1628, Hine sailed out to capture the Spanish treasure fleet loaded with silver from their American colonies. Part of this fleet had been warned because Hein had been spotted. In fact, he was given up by a captured cabin, cabin boy who was taken uh, prisoner by the Spanish treasure fleet. But the other half decided to continue its voyage. Well, 12 Spanish ships were trapped off the Cuban coast in the Bay of Matanzas, and Hein captured about 12 million guilders of booty in gold, silver, and other expensive trade goods, all with
without any bloodshed. The treasure was the company's greatest victory in the Caribbean. As a result, the money funded the Dutch Army for eight months, and the shareholders enjoyed a cash dividend of 70% for that year. He returned to the Netherlands in 1629, where he was hailed as a hero, and with the whip, only received 500 guilders, and quit his fleet bitterly. Henri Evry, Avery, from England, 1673, he was active in 1696. Born in 1653 in Plymouth, he disappeared from record in 1696. A lot of aliases. They included John Avery, Long Ben, Benjamin Bridgman. His ship was the Fancy, and his base of operation was the Indian Ocean. He is most famous for being apparently one of the few major pirate captains to retire with his loot without being arrested or killed in battle. He was known as the Arch Pirate. Black Sam Bellamy, England, active, short time, 1716 to 1717. Even though he was born in England, he grew up in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and he made a living salvaging treasure ships off of the Florida coast with his love, Maria Hallett, from East Ham, Massachusetts. He was nicknamed the Prince of Pirates, Black Sam. His base of operations was the Caribbean, and he died off of Wellfleet, Massachusetts, off the Cape Cod coast. His ships were the Wada, the Marianne, and the Sultana. He plundered more than 50 ships before the age of 29. And when he captured the Wada, it was laden with gold and silver worth more than 20,000 pounds sterling, money that was earned from the sale of slaves. Lads, we've gotten enough. That's what Bellamy has said to have told his men. It's time to go home. The pirate fleet headed to New England, and Maria, his love. But triumph turned to tragedy. On April 26, 1717, a fierce storm sank the ship, killing Bellamy and all but two of his 145 men. In fact, a lot of treasure hunters go diving on the Wada. It's been discovered and covered up by Nor'easters over the years. Calico Jack Rackham. From England, active only two years, 1718 to 1720. That's his flat. So they say. I don't believe it. This, I, I'm this an Encyclopedia Britannica calling this Jack's flag, but I think that this skull and crossbones or the skull and swords actually emerged from Peter Pan. Base of operations, Calico Jack, West Indies. His ship was named the Treasure. And he took over command from Charles Bain, we're going to talk about him in a minute, who was set adrift. Well, in May 1719, Rackham sailed to Nassau Town on New Providence, an island in the Bahamas, to accept an offered open pardon and to settle down. While he was there, he met a woman named Anne Bonny. Well, Anne soon fell pregnant even though she was married. Rackham took Anne off to Cuba to be cared for by friends. By the way, she was disowned by her husband. And Rackham decided to take Anne off to Cuba to be cared for by friends while she had her baby. But unfortunately, the baby died shortly after birth. Her husband wanted to punish her and then offered to sell her to Cal Calico Jack, as I mentioned. So furious, she ran away to sea with Calico Jack, disguised as a man. We've just gone to PG-13. Anne and Jack stole a sloop and began a life of piracy together. Anne fought in men's clothing, was an expert with pistol and cutlass, and considered as dangerous as any male pirate. Eventually, Mary Reed joined her crew, and she was fearless as well, in battle, and often was a member of any boarding party. Those were the, the, the vanguard. When you raided the ship, you put the toughest people up front, they were the first on board to, on a broadside to take another ship. And Anna and Mary were always up there in the van. Well, October 1720, the governor of Jamaica, hearing of Calico's presence, sent an armed sloop to intervene and capture the captain and his crew. Calico's ship revenge was caught by surprise, and much to Anne's dismay, the pirates fought like cowards and were taken far too easily. Let's get Mary Reed in here for a moment. Just Mary Reed, right to the captain. I don't know, 